This part of the country, the Northern Great Plains, has always been a very important part of the country for wildlife. This has always been of critical importance to pollinators, specifically uh, the commercial honeybee keeping industry. So the beekeepers bring their bees here during the summertime to get them fat and happy off of all the uh, forbs we have available to them. And so those bees can then go to other parts of the country and provide that pollination service. In the U.S., we require both domestic and wild pollinators for pollinating a variety of our agricultural crops. Most of our bees here in the Dakotas, they go on to pollinate almond crop in California. But the list goes on and on. Pretty much you walk through the produce aisle, you can bet that a majority of those fruits and vegetables that are in there are there because some insect provided that pollination service. About one third of all the bites of food we take, we can attribute that to insect pollinators. Northern Great Plains um, have historically supported uh, honey production. This is also an area of the country now where a lot of corn and beans are being planted on the land, replacing some of those bee-friendly crops. And all of the agricultural practices that come along with those changes in, in land use increase agrochemical use, specifically the pesticides. We know that that reduces the overall forage availability. So what we're doing is basically capturing that change in land use and what's the effect on honeybee colonies as a result. We're actually in a cow pasture right now. There's like a soybean field over there and a little bit of corn, but for the most part, immediately surrounding this hive uh, yard, there's a lot more just grassland. Uh, usually we get a lot of pollen out of this yard. Honeybees really have an intimate relationship with the environment and the landscape in terms of their colony growth and colony dynamics. The pollen is the main resource that's driving colony growth. It's the pollen that's the sole protein source for honeybee colonies. It's important to have a diversity of pollen sources because each flower species offers different amino acids. Uh, we always like to make the analogy that you can eat crackers your whole life and still live, but you're not going to be very healthy because you're not getting all the vitamins and minerals that you need. Uh, same thing with bees. So the more flowering species that they have, the more protein that they're going to get. Bees are faced with a whole myriad of diseases and insect pathogens. One measurement we need to be apprised of in our health assessment colonies is the varroa infestation rate. So that little mite that you see there is responsible for the biggest problem that beekeepers face. President Obama recently released a federal strategy for improving pollinator health. So they have a couple key goals that they establish. Federal government needs to do a better job in trying to promote pollinator health. Reducing the number of honeybee colonies that are lost on an annual basis and putting in seven million acres of pollinator habitat, either through restoration or landscape enhancement. All of our research objectives fit squarely within the presidential memorandum. So we're looking at how land use change is affecting colony survival, colony health, and then also looking at specific USDA conservation program lands and what kind of contribution they're making to the honeybee diet over the summer. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, they're one of our main partners in this research. The information we collect as scientists that my team collects, we pass that information on to the U.S. Department of Agriculture then. So we can say whether the bees are actually using those USDA conservation lands. And if they're not, then we'll be able to make some re recommendations on ways to improve their seed mixes. So that they can make better and more informed management decisions. I think in the Northern Great Plains we get overlooked quite a bit just because we don't, there are not many people that live out here. And yet we see profound changes taking place here. So we need to bring all these people to the table to find solutions. You know, if we don't have migratory commercial honeybees, our dinner basically looks a lot less colorful and diverse. If we can get some great results and get those out there to policymakers, I think we have a great opportunity right now to actually affect some change that's going to have some lasting impact on the fate of pollinators. Mm -hmm.